Hello everyone and good evening. Welcome to DXB today. We're so excited to have you with us. Now Ramadan is just days away and we're going to be focusing the entire episode. It is also our final episode of season four and we'll be back with you after Ramadan. But first, let's find out what's coming up on today's show. Ahmed heads down to Bombay Baro to get an exclusive look at the special delicacies from their new iftar menu. Plus, we are bringing you everything you do not want to miss this Ramadan in the city. Also, Duo Violence will be joining us in the studio for an electric close to the season. What? Closing the season? Could you believe, guys? It's our last show and we'll be kicking off uh, Ramadan really soon. Any big plans? Oh, I'm just excited. You know what? Ramadan is that one month a year where I see everybody that I haven't seen the entire year. All of those second cousins and lost relatives and we go from Sharjah to Dubai to Abu Dhabi. It is a super social month and yeah, a very spiritual one for me as well. So yes. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, most you, of my Ramadan rituals would be uh, back in Jordan. Uh, before I moved to the UAE, but my brother has moved here now, so we're going to have some Ramadan rituals of our own. But you know what? For me, Ramadan is a time to rest. You know, doing what we do, there's a lot of running around, doing this, doing that. The whole city just sort of chills out a little bit, and we just have some iftars to look forward to. So I'm excited to get with do that. Although on that note, I was just talking to a friend earlier on, and we we're like, do you really think it's going to calm down this Ramadan? Dubai has been bustling, and you know, a lot of big plans for Ramadan as well. well I'll tell you what, I'm going to calm down this Ramadan. <laughs> okay. Well. You know what, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but first, let's welcome our guest co-host and find out who it is. Assalamu alaikum, Nasif Kayed, the CEO of the Arab Culturalist. Happy to be with you today. Yes, Nasif will join us in just a little bit, but first, as we head into the month of Ramadan, Ahmed headed down to the award-winning modern Indian restaurant, Bombay Baro, to try some out the rich delicacies that they have to offer from their exclusive iftar menu. We're gonna be very jealous. Take a look at this. Hello people! As you know, Ramadan is just around the corner and Indian cuisine is one of the favorites here in the region. We're at Bombay Boro to find out more about their iftar menu. So follow me as we delve into their delicious food. So Chef, thank you very much for having me with you most today. Most welcome, most welcome, most welcome. And before we speak about this lovely spread over here, I just wanted to know more about the restaurant Bombay Boro. Can you please tell us more about it? Yes. So uh, at Bombay Baro, we celebrate India. Uh, every small region of India, we try and uh, get different components from there. We get the authentic recipes from there, different flavors from there. And we twist it our way and present it in a most modern form that we can. I like that, I like that. Yeah, and like you said, Ramadan is around the corner and I know, exactly. I know a lot of people are gonna be waiting to know what you have in store for iftar. So can you please walk Definitely. us through? So this time we've tried uh, iftar dastar khan. Yeah. Uh, dastar khan word itself comes from a Persian background, mm -hmm. which literally what this is, like a, yes. a widespread of food. Generally, uh, people uh, either they take salt yeah. or they take dates. Mm -hmm. So what we have done is we've done a mash of both. We've okay. taken date, we've stuffed it with cream cheese oh, and nice. we've to topped it with sea salt. Yeah. This is a Kashmiri shufta, which is almost like a caramelized nuts. We mm -hmm. have red cranberries, we have uh, fresh red currants and these are shirmal cookies. Okay. Shirmal is again a very North Indian Mughlai bread, which is sweetened bread. Mm -hmm. We've made a cookie out of it. We have a Banarsi tomato chart here, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very tangy, spicy tomato mixture topped with a little uh, farsan that we call it. Since, uh, you know, iftar can't be completed without samosas. Yes, they're, they're one so of the most important things that we the have. The most on. important. <laughs> yes. This time we've tried veg samosas. Okay. And uh, veg samosas are very, you know, common in India. Yeah. So as you know, most of the places have buffets mm. during uh, Ramadan, but yeah. how is yours going to be? Is it a buffet or a la carte? Uh, so we have done a set menu which is a nine course uh, mm -hmm. set menu. Okay. Uh, we start with the amuse, then we uh, give the grazing board which is iftar, uh, iftar board that we call it. Mm -hmm. As you can see there's a lot of different dishes that I still haven't tried but I'll be busy doing all of that but before I go make sure you come down to Bombay Boro during the month of Ramadan to try this amazing spread.
And now we know why Ahmed has been spending so much time at the gym. It's because he's doing all these reports where he goes and eats and then calls it work. We're watching you, Ahmed. <laughs> now our next guest is a cultural expert who is devoted to fostering a deeper understanding of the vibrant heritage that defines the Arab world. A seasoned entrepreneur, he is an advocate for creating educational experiences that break cultural barriers. Please welcome the founder of the Arab culturalist, Nasif Kayat, to the show. We're very excited to have you. Thank you so you much. Have, you have such a presence. We're, we're, we're so genuinely much. happy to have you here with so us nice. on the couch. Now, first question for you, because this is something that you do for a living. So just to create a bit of context before we dive into Ramadan, what is it that you do as a I cultural expert? I like that expert? you do for a living. This. Yeah. People come to me as the actual uh, cultural expert and they ask uh, uh, about the culture, the tradition, the history of UAE, the Arabs, the Muslims at large. But then when it comes to the month of Ramadan, we are talking about, so what is this month is all about? What, what am I supposed to do? What, what should I be expecting? Uh, what can I not do or, not, or do? You know, people have questions. So I'm invited to events. Uh, to where I speak during their iftar to their or suhoor, sometimes at three in the morning I am <laughs> talking to people, <laughs> 300 people sitting. Or sometimes we want to have what we call a cultural experience. So therefore we uh, outsource a venue of our own and we have traditional setting and traditional iftar from A to Z and we do it just like we do it at home. Mm -hmm. Is it normally corporate or companies that hire services or would tourists come and ask for assistance uh, as well? Tourists such as like university, like I will get some MBA programs or some people who come in to learn about the culture, so they will book it, yes, but not individual tourists and you, you know, uh, there is and other venues that are especially for that. But for me, it's particularly a program that is catered to a groups of people or companies in particular. Nasif, why would you say it's important for the UAE to, you know, really uplift the culture and the heritage when it comes to residences, when it comes to locals, tourists alike? You know, being in, uh, in a world of ambiguity is not uh, comfortable. It's very uh, uh, annoying to not know what to do, what not to do, and to be frustrated with uh, should I, should I not. And so therefore to understand is very important and therefore to go to the people who are expert at it and willing to talk about it and willing to explain it is very important. So I do that in every which way you are well, willing to listen. You know what, Nasif, let's talk about it then. Yeah. What are some of the things that people don't know, some of the, the mistakes or things that they assume that could be wrong or some of the, um, the facts that they're pleasantly surprised by? Well, first of all, why do you have to do this? Uh, is this an order? As like it's, it's you know one of the acts of worship that you, we fast month from Ramadan. Fasting is prescribed to human being, but it's not we the only one and the first ones. All humanity throughout life, the Almighty has prescribed fasting. Uh, nutritionists call for it nowadays. Dietitians call for it nowadays. Everybody's like, like you know, fasting is good for you. So and everyone's doing the intermittent fasting yeah, now too. right. <laughs> and everybody believes in that. And yeah. so therefore, really, the Lord said, look, I want you in this month, month of Ramadan, which is the ninth lunar calendar month, to abstain from crack of dawn till sunset, 16 to 18 hours. People say, oh my God, what if I am in a place where it's 22 for 24 hours? I'm like, move. <laughs> find another place. You cannot be fasting Ramadan in Norway or right? just go somewhere else. But uh, this is what happens to the people that they don't understand that fasting is not to be a burden on you, it's really to enhance you. So therefore it's a disruptive month that uh, changes the way uh, we live, when we sleep, when we drink, when we eat, uh, how we communicate with each other, social activities are different at different times of the day. It really becomes a very nice uh, time uh, to enjoy all together. So we abstain from food and drinks, but really what a lot of people don't know that there is no foul language. Your mouth has to be zipped. Your eyes cannot look at unlawful. Uh, your body language has to be very uh, subdued and in good demeanor. So therefore, it's not really just like no food and no drinks. That's just the sidekick. But Our whole being has to. Just a quick question though, as someone who is not observing Ramadan, so say, say someone who just came here into the country, is there any do's and don'ts from our end? Like yeah, should we you know, not you, eat You need to be mindful, it? you need to say, okay, listen, I, I, I have to have my coffee in the morning, is that okay with you? Uh, but don't come and sit and start teasing me like, oh my God, coffee tastes so good today. Well, thanks a lot, appreciate <laughs> that, you know what I mean? 
Uh, everybody has their weaknesses, you know. Some people get hungry when they're hungry, all they think about is food, and that's why there is the buffets and there is all this misconceptions where people uh, overeat in Ramadan, unfortunately. It should be like, okay, this person uh, loves coffee, so therefore I'm not gonna go and have mine in front of him. Just like smoking cigarettes, you know how you, know, you wanna step outside to smoke a cigarette and not be in front of the people, but also away from the door because people get in and out of the door, so you don't wanna bother them. In Ramadan, each and every one has their own, uh, please bear in mind this for me. You cannot go throw a bag of popcorn in the microwave and the whole hallway smells like popcorn. <laughs> oh goodness, yes. I think yeah. it is important to note that even if you're not observing Ramadan, it's good to understand that this is happening around you, not just when it comes to food and drink, when it comes to the way you dress, when it comes to playing music loudly, foul language, which is always not okay. Yeah, exactly. yeah sure, everything, because people say, so what am I supposed to wear? And then during Ramadan, I say, modestly, look, head to toe. The concept here is not uh, to attract, but most likely is to, what we forget about the other 11 months, is really not to uh, in uh, influence people in a negative way by thinking of uh, themselves that they cannot afford what you have, that they think of themselves less than you. Absolutely. And nowadays we go trying to look good and <laughs> trying to look beautiful. Yes, fine, it's no problem. But in Ramadan, you know, you'll find Muslim women all of a sudden stop wearing makeup and, you, and the people ask, why did she stop? Is that breaks your fast? No. As it? much as we want to continue this very interesting conversation right now, <laughs> and believe me, I really want to. But right now, I just want to remind you to stay with us as we are getting insights into Sport for Support campaign. It's launched by the Dubai Police. They're merging sports and charity during this holy month of Ramadan. Plus, Duo Violence is playing us out with a special composition. So stay right there.